Hello everyone. In this session, let me explain you guys about the Pentium pipeline. We've been discussing about the Pentium system architecture. Now we need to understand about the pipelining and the implementation process of pipelining in the Pentium architecture. <music> First of all, let us have a quick recap on what is pipelining. When it comes to the pipelining, pipelining is eventually used to speed up the processes. That is, in order to increase the throughput, we are going to use the pipeline. What is pipelining in fact? Pipelining is simply segmentizing the instruction queue or data queue. We do have two different kinds of a pipelining techniques. One is instruction pipelining, one more is data pipeline. When we introduce this pipelining concept, that is segmentizing this uh, ALU, we will talk about data pipeline. When we talk about segmentizing the instruction cycle, it comes under instruction pipeline. Now, once again, understand the difference between data pipeline and the instruction pipeline. You know that pipelining is a technique of decomposing a sequential task into several subtasks, where each subtask is going to get executed in its own and dedicated segment. It's all about segmentization. Let us say I do have a single ALU. This single ALU is capable of performing one operation at a time. Either it can perform any of the arithmetic tasks, or it can perform any of the logical tasks, or it will perform any of the shift tasks. But what if we can segmentize this, such as arithmetic, uh, you know, segment of uh, the ALU, even in which the arithmetic segment of the ALU, again, it will be divided as addition segment, subtraction segment, multiplication segment, and a divider segment. And when it comes to the logical segment, the logical segment will be further subdivided into many segments in which each segment is going to carry out one logical operation. This is all about segmentization. In segmentization, we'll be, a, we'll be able to perform many tasks parallelly within the single ALU as it is pipeline. This is all about pipe. When it comes to the instruction pipelining, instruction fetch, decode, execution phases will be pipeline. That is, we're going to separate these segments, fetch, decode, execution. In the earlier version, in the, in the previous versions of Pentium, rather the initial versions of Pentium, such as Pentium 1 and 2, we used three segmented pipeline. But when it comes to Pentium 3 or 4 and so on, we used a five stage pipeline. We are going to talk about this five-stage instruction pipeline right now. When it comes to the Pentium pipeline, we do have the following stages. The first stage is called prefetch stage. What is prefetch stage? You know that in the fetch stage, we are going to fetch the instruction, right? But here, when it comes to the Pentium processor, a Pentium processor is going to provide you a buffer in which you will be able to store many instructions. So in the preface stage, what is going to happen is many of the instructions will be fetched from the memory and will get stored in the buffer. Pentium instructions are variable in length and are stored in the prefetch buffer. There is a 256-bit path from the instruction cache to the prefetch buffer. A total of 256-bit path is available. So rather than one instruction, here we will be able to store a total of six to seven instructions, rather six to eight instructions at a time. Okay, six to eight next instructions. As the current instruction being computed or executed in, in the ALU, we are going to fetch a total of eight next instructions. Okay, so we do have a queue of eight instructions within the process. Next one is the decode stage one. What is decode stage one? In this stage, the processor decodes the instruction 
and finds the opcode and addressing information, check which instruction can be paid for simultaneous execution and the participates in branch address prediction. In the decode one stage, opcode will get decoded. In addition to the opcode, the address will be interpreted. As you decode the opcode, we will also will be able to know if the current instruction is a branch instruction. If the current instruction is a branch instruction, we need to check the condition. We need to execute a condition, evaluate a condition to find out if we are going to take this branch or not. You know that during a conditional branch, we're going to evaluate the condition in which if the condition gets satisfied, the branch will get taken. Otherwise, the branch won't get taken. So in the decode stage one, the opcode will get interpreted. Okay. When the opcode gets interpreted, there will be two choices. It could be either a branch instruction or a non-branching instruction. If it is a non-branching instruction, well and good. But if there is a non-branching instruction, we will see if there is any paid instruction for this. What is paid instruction? If it is a paid instruction, next instruction will be dependent on this. For an example, currently I am executing X instruction. This X instruction is going to give a result which is going to be used by the Y instruction. These are called paired instruction or dependent instruction. So the decode one stage, we're going to check many things. The first one is we're going to see if it is a branch instruction. And if it's a branch instruction, we need to find out the branch target address by evaluating the condition. We will talk about the branch instruction in some time. If it is a non-branch instruction, fine, non-branch instruction doesn't yield any problem. Rather, when a non-branch instruction is interpreted, then the processor is going to find out if there is any next subsequent instruction which is dependent on the current instruction. So it is going to find out if this instruction is getting paired or related to the other instructions in this flow. Okay. Simulates execution and participates in the branch address prediction. Fine. We are going to understand about the branch address prediction in the next slide. Decodes two stage. Addresses for memory references are found in this stage. Now in the decode one stage, what is going to happen? We are going to find out the opcode. What is the opcode? When the opcode is interpreted, we need to find out the operand's address in the main memory. Most of the times the operands are available in the main memory. In order to access the main memory, we need to find out the address of the operand which is embedded to the instruction. So in the decode 2 stage, we are going to do this process. For an example, there is a typical instruction add 250, 360, in which 250 is a memory location as well 360 also is another memory location in which memory of 250 will get added to 360 memory of 360 and finally will get transferred to memory of 250. If this is the instruction, the operation will be interpreted in the decode one stage and the memory addresses will be found out in the decode stage, decode two stage. So by taking this, collecting these addresses, we need to go to the main memory. But before that, we need to check out what are the memory addresses that are, that are storing the operands. So in the decode 2 stage, the memory addresses for the operands will be found out. Finally, we do have something called an execution stage. During the execution stage, a data cache fetch or ALU or FPU operation may be carried out. What is the data cache fetch? If the operand is available in the data cache, we are going, going to access the operand directly from the data cache. If the operands are avail already available, in the processor's register, an ALU operation will get performed in addition to the data cache fetch. Okay, directly ALU operation is going to be performed if, if operands are directly available within the processor's register. Okay, and if the operands are not available in the processor's register, data cache will get fetched for the operands. And in addition to the integer ALU, we got something called a floating point unit. If it is a floating point operation, the operation is going to be performed in the floating point unit. So 
there is an execution stage in which three different operations can get performed a data cache fetch in addition to the alu operation or an fpo operation which is a floating point operation which is only going to be performed in floating point unit right backstage the moment we are ready with the output from the alu this alu output should be transferred to the registers these registers will be written in addition to the main memory in the right backstage registers and flags will get updated based on the result of the execution this is all about pentium pipeline once again let us go through this again what is prefetch stage the prefetch stage is similar to the fetch stage of the pipeline you know that in the fetch stage of the pipeline next instruction will get fetched and let it here current instruction is 20th instruction if the current instruction is the 20th instruction we need to fetch the 21st instruction into the processor in the fetch stage the 21st instruction will be fetched did you get it right after the current instruction is executed we need to fetch the next instruction but in the pentium processors we do have a huge buffer to store this instruction the total buffer size is 256 256 bytes and instructions are of variable in length so we can store a maximum of eight instructions in the buffer at a time at a time we will be able to store a maximum of eight instructions now next eight instructions will be transferred from memory to this buffer during the prefetch stage after which we do have a decode one stage in the decode one stage the opcode will get decoded to interpret the operation right right after interpreting the operation we do have something else to do what is that if the current operation is if the current operation is a branch operation then we need to execute the branch condition in order to evaluate the condition we need to take some time but the condition can be skipped if we use a branch prediction scheme here in the pentium we are going to use a branch prediction scheme for an example there is an instruction if x is equal to y then execute a plus b otherwise a minus b here we need to evaluate a condition if x is equal to y in order to evaluate this condition this x is equal to y must be processed in the alu this alu operation will take some time so rather than executing this we are going to use a scheme called branch prediction the branch prediction scheme is used in pentium processors to speed up the branch instructions so rather than evaluating the condition completely we are going to use a branch prediction scheme okay that will be done during the decode one stage okay and uh, check the instruction can be paid if there are dependent instructions if the current instruction is dependent on the previous instruction or the following instruction those dependencies can be identified in the decode one stage in addition to which the branch address prediction what we have discussed right there is another stage which is called a decode two stage memory addresses of the operands will be identified because an instruction is a composure of opcode and the address of the operands if there are address of operands available within instruction those addresses will be identified in the decode two stage there is something called an execution stage during which the the alu operation will be carried out in addition to accessing the data cache because sometimes the data will be directly available in the data cache so as the execution is in pro uh, progress directly the data elements can be fetched from the data cache again if the current operation is a floating point operation there is a separate floating point unit embedded to the system that operation will get carried out in the floating point unit finally write back what is write back stage during the write back stage 
the result of the instruction will get transferred to the resultant register and the main memory locations and also the system flags will get updated because right at the end of each and every instruction we do need to update the flags that will be done during the right back stage now let us see of course it is kind of a blur but let us understand instruction cache of 8 kb instruction cache of 8 kb from the instruction cache we are going to fetch the instructions you know that l1 cache is divided into two parts one is instruction cache and one more is data cache from the 8 kb instruction cache the instruction will get fetched where this 256 bytes instruction buffer within the processor we do have a 256 byte instruction buffer from the instruction cache we are going to fetch as many instructions as we can accommodate in this 256 byte uh, uh, instruction buffer right after which we are going to go to the next stage which is going to be divided into two queues qa and qb okay in which instruction decoding and pairing is going to be done okay after which next stage is alu operation the alu operation is going to be done here in the third stage okay after which register file will get updated okay and at the same time if the data is available within the data cache the data is going to get transferred from the data cache to this alu so this is the thing in the prefetch buffers what is going to happen instructions will get fetched right after the instruction has been fetched right after the instruction has been fetched this instruction should be decoded in the decode one stage again this is decode one stage decode two stage two stage directly given here okay rather you know there will be queues divided these two queues are going to give the values to this instruction decoder this is clubbed as one it is being as a you know it is it is shown as a clubbed one but here you need to imagine that instruction decoding which is divided into two parts have been clubbed here here if there is a branch instruction if there is a branch instruction there is a branch prediction scheme used which is called a branch target buffer without executing the branch instruction without evaluating the condition of the branch the branch instruction will be transferred to the branch target buffer in this branch target buffer the target of the branch will be predicted the condition of the branch will be predicted if x is equal to y will be dynamically predicted even without executing it then branch target buffer is going to store the target address of the current uh, instruction current branch instruction so here this mechanism is simply is going to skip evaluating the condition you need to understand this total mechanism will skip evaluating the condition this branch target buffer is going to give you the target instructions address even without executing this condition this is the thing okay so as you can clearly see once again from prefetch buffers there will be two queues there will be two queues in which paired instruction can be placed and the branch instructions can be placed stay focused carefully okay if there is a branch instruction it will be transmitted to the branch target buffer and it will be identified if it is a paid instruction of course the data dependent instruction all these instructions will get directly sent to the alu if the alu requires the data to be fetched from the data cache it is going to perform the data cache fetch as the instruction is in the alu okay from the data cache to the integer register file from the integer register file to the alu the instruction rather you know the data element will be supplied this is the thing okay next right after this from the data cache to the floating point unit it will get transferred that is let us say in the prefetch buffer if you do have a floating point instruction those instruction will get transferred to fpu regular instruction which doesn't have this floating point operations will directly get transferred to our alu the other instruction which requires a floating point unit will get transferred to the floating point unit even the floating point unit also gets the values from the 
data cache. This is the architecture and the pipelining of the Pentium processor. This is the advanced pipelining concept of the Pentium processor right from Pentium 3 and Pentium 4. Before that, the Pentium uses just three-stage pipeline. Thank you.